story that came out July 9th, 2018. They now have a name for these children that are ending up in the system because their parents are on drugs or, or they've even died from a drug overdose. They're called opioid orphans, unseen victims of the drug epidemic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this trend is all over. I even read an article a few weeks ago about how the foster care system, even here in my state, is exploding with these children now. And there's just not enough people that are stepping up and taking them in. And they were pretty much pleading to the public to try to take some of them in. And people are simply not coming forward. And a lot of times, you know, it's hard taking on a bunch of children, not unless it's something that you really want to do or, you know, and the thing is the family members are not stepping up. You would think that you would see a lot of family stepping up to get these children. Those family members are going on about their business. They're not even getting involved. And that's another reason why the system is now exploding with these children. So I'm going to go ahead. But also and it's let me helping see our environment. I'm going to play a video for you. Okay, here it is. After we get past this commercial. School just let out, the bustle of backpacks and race for a snack is on. But look closer, no moms here or dads. These are trained staff members and these kids are orphans of addiction. They've seen so much that no child should ever see. They've seen their parents pass away in front of them maybe several times. The Spalding Youth Center is located on nearly 500 acres in Northfield. This place has been caring for orphans since the Civil War. The name has changed a few times and the mission shifted. Over the course of the history of Spalding, we've definitely reflected what's going on in society. I would say 30 to 40 percent of our kids are the children of addiction. My mother's a drug addict and my father, I don't have a father anymore. K.H. has special permission to do this interview. He's been a Spalding kid for a year and a half. Drugs ruined his family. If you start them, they're really addicting and it's really hard to stop them. Do you have a feeling about them, an opinion about them? I hate their guts. There are more boys than girls here now. The group we met, all boys, all heartbreakingly articulate about needing what they call a forever home. Is this better than home? <laughs> yeah. How come? Because... There's no more hitting. E is 11, painfully shy, but certain he wanted to do an interview. He told us he cries sometimes, and sometimes he's mad. 55 children between the ages of 5 and 21 live here on campus. Half of them are under the age of 10. A direct result, says Ryan, of the opioid crisis. These families just are falling apart, and there's no place safe for these kids to be. The operating budget here is $17 million annually and includes a school. Ryan says it's not enough. The residential children need 24-7 staffing, plus student aides, clinicians, teachers, and nurses. We're largely underfunded. We have to fundraise to um, make ends meet. You know what you want to be when you grow up? Same thing that you are. What am I? News reporter. PC is seven. He loves to clean. He misses his mom, but knows now she will only ever be a visitor in his life. They want me to stay for a forever home. That's what they decided. How do you feel about that? I don't feel very great about it. The drug epidemic is bringing a new kind of trauma to campus. And the 250 staff members here need training. These young children have been neglected in many cases since birth. Like I, his mother died when he was just a year old. 
And his father was a Spalding kid here once too. We've had drug addiction for lots of generations, but nothing like we're seeing now. And this is like a generational tsunami that we need to stop. Susan Ryan says her staff needs training in relational intervention because the children of drug addiction bring different behaviors and trauma than the other students at Spalding. She'd like to see a sliver of the millions going toward drug recovery programs right now go toward the children who are left. All right. You pretty much heard the whole thing. Now, I know here in my state of New Jersey, they have um, really been putting these articles in the paper about how many children are in the system. And, and just like everywhere else, it's exploding. And we know all too well during the crack epidemic, this is what happened to many of our children in the black community, they ended up in the system. Unfortunately, relatives not, are not gonna always step up to the plate. And you can see that is the case with what they call these opioid orphans now. You know, there are just so many children and they're not being placed in, in their right. They're gonna probably be Behind. in the system for the rest Amy of their be life. They're going to be in this system for the rest of their lives. And in many cases, you know, as this epidemic continues to explode all over the country. So, you know, this is really history repeating itself. We saw grandparents become parents again because, you know, their children either died or they ended up in jail during the crack epidemic. And really the same thing is happening now. You know, no matter how hard they try to keep these addicts out of jail, they are ultimately going to end up in jail. There's just how do you keep them out of jail when they're going to go out here and commit crimes to fulfill a drug addiction? You can't. They're going to go to jail no matter how much they try to put laws in and give them amnesty. They're still going to end up there. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And if you can support my channel, please do. Peace, family.